Welcome to online worship at St. Luke's Lutheran Church, Park Ridge, Illinois. I am Dick Johnson, one of the pastors here at St. Luke's, and I am joined today by my colleague, Pastor Sally Hansen, who will be sharing the sermon today. We are also joined by Ann Krenz Organ, our organist and music director, along with Nikki and Haley and Jenny Callahan as our cantors for this day. Janet Hoiberg will be our lector and our intercessor from home. We will be celebrating Holy Communion as a part of worship today. Please make sure that you have elements of bread and wine available to you. Communion will take place immediately following the prayers of intercession. We will give you a cue uh, during communion liturgy when you should partake of communion. We continue to thank you for all of your unwavering support to St. Luke's during this pandemic. We have a reestablished uh, office hours at St. Luke's, uh, which will be 10 till two o'clock uh, each weekday um, af morning and afternoon. We do have church envelopes available to the congregation at this time. You can pick them up during those stated office hours or call the church office and arrange to have them dropped off or pick them up at another time. We will be having our annual meeting at St. Luke's on Sunday, January the 31st, beginning at 11 a.m. This will be a Zoom meeting format this year. We will not have any in-person part of the meeting. You can find the invitation for the meeting in your e-news that is sent on Saturdays or last week's e-news that was sent a week ago Saturday or this week's weekly conversation. We remember the following people in our prayers today. Peter, Eric, Gary, Nancy, Lila, Craig, Jim, June, Arlene, Chet, Elaine, Pat, Margaret, Stephanie, Michael, Milo, Terry, Glenn, Ingrid, Carter, Ruth, Jane, Joel, Evelyn, Vicki, Ruth, other families in our congregation suffering from COVID-19, Eleanor. We also pray for those who are recently departed. Jim's sister, Cindy, Sue's husband, Mick, and John's mother, Jean. Our service continues with the prelude.
to walk as a child of the light. I want to follow Jesus. God said, Blessed us to give light to the world. The star of my life is Jesus. In him there is no darkness at all. The night and the day are both alike. The Lamb is the light of the city of God. Shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. I want to see the brightness of God. I want to look at Jesus. Clear sun of righteousness, shine on my path and show me the way to the Father. In Him there is no darkness at all. The night and the day are both alike. The Lord is the light of the city of God. Shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. I'm looking for the coming of Christ. I want to be with Jesus. When we have run with patience the race, we shall know the joy of Jesus. In Him there is no darkness at all, the night and the day are both alike. The Lamb is the light of the city of God, shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Compassionate God, you gather the whole universe into your radiant presence and continually reveal your Son as our Savior. Bring wholeness to all that is broken and speak truth to us in our confusion that all creation will see and know your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Good morning. It's great to be with you this morning for our children's message. When I was a little boy, um, my dad taught me a, a game. And I'm sure maybe uh, you've been taught that same game. It's a very simple game. It's used with our hands. It's rock paper, and scissors. Um, and you use this game uh, to determine, you know, who's going to be first uh, to do different things. Uh, sometimes you use it just as a way of saying, who's the strongest? And so the game goes, I'm sure most of you know it, um, that a rock is covered by paper. Paper is cut by scissors. And a rock breaks the scissors. So uh, when you play this game, it starts rock, paper, scissors. And then on the third one, you actually give your sign. And that is the way you determine who is the strongest. And so we used to play that game all the time. And, and then I think part of the, the, the penalty for losing was that someone would lick their fingers and slap your wrist. Um, and to demonstrate that you are stronger than the other person. In our gospel lesson for today, there is this power struggle about who's the strongest too. Uh, Jesus is in the temple and someone confronts him. It is a demon and says that I am stronger than you, Jesus. But Jesus commands him to be silent. Jesus demonstrates that he is stronger than any demon that might try to attack an individual or he himself. Jesus 
has a strength about him that is so very important. It's stronger than any bullying or any fighting or anything like that. Jesus' strength is about love. He wants us to be whole. He wants us to be healed. And that strength is always about how he can make people better. We live in a world oftentimes where strength is really done to kind of um, to make us look good and someone else not look good. It's to kind of in some way or another let people know that I'm more important than somebody else. That's not the strength that Jesus uses. Jesus understands that the perfect strength comes out of a deep desire to love and to heal. And that's exactly what you're going to hear this morning in our gospel reading. So the next time you play rock, paper, scissors, and you win, and you lick your fingers and slap the person's wrist next to you, remember that that is one way that we can show power over another person. But Jesus, instead of playing rock, paper, scissors, holds out his hands to us and says, let me heal you. Let me love you. Let me care for you. And to me, that is what true strength is. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for your love for your love that is strong, but a love that is strong based on healing and making people whole. In this world, there are a lot of people right now who are sick. Make them whole and bring them to full life. We pray this in your holy name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. A reading from Deuteronomy. Moses said, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, If I hear the voice of the Lord my God any more, or ever again see this great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, They are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet, who shall speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words that the prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods or who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus and his disciples went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. Just then, there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked the spirit, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit 
convulsing the man and crying out with a loud voice came out of the man. They were amazed and they kept on asking one another, what is this, a new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits and they obey him. At once, his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding regions of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Where the Wild Things Are by Maurice Sendak is one of children's literature's most beloved books. In the story, the boy Max plays dress up by wearing his wolf costume and is running amok, to put it nicely, around the house, clearly not listening to his mother. His mother sends him to bed out of frustration with no supper. It's when Max gets to his room that the story really takes off. Max's imagination runs wild, creating actual creatures who are the wild things. His new community away from his mom who sent him to bed without supper. But even after being crowned king of the wild things and getting into wild rumpus, Max is still lonely. When he sends the wild things off to, sup up, off to bed without their supper, we read that he wants to be where he's loved best of all. Don't we all want that too? To be loved, to be part of a community that loves us unconditionally, even among the wild things. We've all had experiences with wild things. Those thoughts, experiences, ideals that seem like they take over our very being. Anger, jealousy, envy, frustration, and fear to just name a few. For some, these experiences are truly wild. They're rare and few and far between. But for others, we feel like these wild things are caged within our bodies all the time, or at least more often than not. I wonder if that's how the man felt today in our gospel that with all those wild things within him, he was no longer able to keep them caged and controlled until the wild things possessed his very being. His true self had become the thing that was trapped by the wild things and not the other way around. Have you ever felt trapped like that? Thought to yourself, this isn't me. And yet there's something deep within you, a, a tethering of your spirit that allows you to draw upon that strength in a moment that is available to reveal that this really isn't you and that your true self is able to reach out and withstand the wild things, even for just a moment. I think... That's what happened today. The man with the unclean spirit was possessed by wild things. It's curious to notice that this isn't, it isn't the man that cried out to Jesus for healing, but it was the wild things of his possession were so afraid of Jesus' presence that they had to speak out and present a challenge. One, they identified Jesus by name as to not have anyone be confused who they, the spirits, the unclean spirits, were talking to. Two, they proclaim intimate knowledge of who Jesus is before Jesus had shared it with anyone who wasn't at his baptism earlier in the chapter. Three, they made themselves known in a sacred space. It's as if the wild things gave up their very best hiding spot. And four, 
they try to get Jesus in trouble with the scribes by challenging him on the Sabbath. It was a last ditch effort of if you go, I go. Jesus gives two commands in response to silence the wild things and to leave the man they possess. Imagine, imagine you were standing there among the scribes, those who are the authorities on scripture, those who are of the authority of what was right and what was wrong. And in two commands, this man, this person from Nazareth has done something that the scribes were not able to do for a very long time. Cure the man who sits in the synagogue of an unclean spirit that possessed him. So now, the aftermath of an attitudinal spirit that was exercised from the man, the scribes realize Christ's real authority and are jealous, and they're threatened by it. And because, the opportune, because of the opportune moment that those wild things, the unclean spirit claimed, it was Sabbath, and the wild thing knew just how much Jesus would get in. Thus sets up the rest of the Gospel of Mark, about who Christ is and by what authority he comes, and the inclusion of the Gospel for all of those who are possessed. So, have you been or seen a possession of some sort? Well, some may not have seen a spiritual possession. I bet others have seen different kinds of possessions or even have been possessed themselves. Possessed by the passion of greed, jealousy, or envy. I don't believe that any of us has never had a bout of possession of anger that caused us to act in a way that we would later regret or even be so possessed by fear that it elicits a fight, flight, or freeze response. So what possesses us today? What is eliciting our fight, flight, or freeze response? Or even on a more personal note, what would be absolutely mortifying to have, have called out publicly, having the world know about you in one of the most crowded places, especially in front of those who are supposed to know what is right and wrong, just like the scribes. Perhaps that mortifying thing that you choose to not share is something from your past. Maybe it's a reality that you've simply been trying to avoid or a conflict that you know really needs to be confronted, but the fear of the possible outcomes possess you. So if individuals can be possessed, what about entire communities? Can they be possessed by something? I think yes. I think they can be possessed by any one of the many isms that plague our world. Ageism, sexism, racism, or maybe even workaholicism or affluenza, greed. Unfulfilling careers and addictions of all kinds. Today's gospel is talking about us not just people in the biblical times. Did you notice that the man that was possessed by the demons so strong that they feared Jesus was the one sitting in worship at the synagogue? Huh. I guess really not like any one of us at all. Perhaps that's the vulnerable truth we don't really want to hear that we aren't any better or have it any to get more together than the man sitting in the synagogue filled with an unclean spirit in which the wild things are stirring deep 
within him. So if we're nothing more than the possessed man sitting in the synagogue, what's the good news? The good news is this. Christ has come to proclaim heaven on earth and does this by opposing the forces of evil head on in order to restore all children of God into wholeness and into all the hopes and dreams that God has for each and every one of us. Christ's cleansing spirit is still at work today. It didn't stop in the synagogue that day. In fact, the news spread quickly and we'll soon hear in the next few weeks of Mark's gospel of the hordes and hordes of people who would come who had been filled with unclean spirits simply wanting to get near Christ. They wanted those wild things to be let go and to not be possessed by them. This news was spreading quickly, perhaps even more quickly, are those stories of cleansing. Have you ever heard a story of an unclean spirit being cleansed? Perhaps a workaholic who traveled constantly for work was forced to be home due to COVID only to realize how much they were truly missing while they were away, and then taking action to make this change and being able to stay home a little more with their family a reality. Perhaps it's a cancer treatment that miraculously works, or the person who seems to pinch their pennies at every corner, being abundantly generous in times of crisis or interventions where people are willing to boldly stand before loved ones to say enough to the demons of addiction. Cleansing is happening around us. God's spirit is active in our communities, calling out injustice, revealing our own insecurities and biases, forcing us to rethink and reevaluate all we've ever known to be right and wrong, just like the scribes. Maybe those lines of right and wrong have gotten a little more blurry rather than rigid. Maybe our world isn't about right and wrong. Maybe it's about something more. Perhaps that something more starts like Jesus said, Be silent, come out of your shell, avoid the wild rompus and go where you are loved always, especially when you are feeling lonely. Maybe it's joyfully engaging in a deeper relation with the one that is possessed by love for you today and always. And to be able to use these positive things of possession, those things that you possess to bring God's kingdom to earth here and now. Because Lord knows we need them. Amen. There is one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. United in Christ, let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. 
He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us offer to God both our praises and our petitions for all in need, responding to each prayer with the words, Hear us and help us. Faithful God, we praise you for sustaining the church during this difficult time. We pray that you give to all preachers and teachers the power of your prophetic spirit that their words will proclaim the comfort and challenge of Christ. Lead to yourself all those who have become captive to false prophets and empty promises. Free them and embrace them in your mercy. O faithful God, we pray, hear us and help us. Bountiful God, we praise you for continuously creating the earth and nourishing its creatures. We pray that you restore lands and waters that have been harmed by human misuse. Raise up advocates for an ecological way of life and guide us toward an appropriate use of government in preserving the earth's natural resources. O bountiful God, we pray, Hear us and help us. Ruling God, we praise you for an inauguration and the days following that were free from violence and marked by hope. We pray that you give wisdom to our elected and appointed officials, to political parties, and to grassroots organizers, that in all things they endeavor to serve the common good. Guide our nation out of the ways of prejudice and into equality and justice for all. O ruling God, we pray, hear us and help us. Healing God, we praise you for each day of health and well-being, and we pray for all who are sick or suffering. Comfort those with mental illness or emotional stress, those institutionalized or living on the streets or residing in our homes. We pray for those in our community, especially Peter, Eric, Gary, Nancy, Lila, Craig, Jim, June, Arlene, Chester, Elaine, Pat, Margaret, Stephanie, Michael, Milo, Terry, Glenn, Ruth, Jane, Joel, Evelyn, Vicki, Ruth, Eleanor, and those we name in our hearts. Carter. O oh, healing God, we pray, hear us and help Compassionate God, we give you thanks for the development of COVID-19 vaccines, and we pray for their fair and prompt distribution. Increase in our land a commitment to limit contagion to others. Visit all who have contracted the coronavirus and all who are experiencing the long-term effects of COVID-19. Strengthen medical workers and home health aids. 
O oh, compassionate God, we pray, hear us and help us. Reconciling God, we praise you for your spirit of wisdom and concord. We pray for all who make ethical decisions, whether in homes, in churches, or in societies. Keep families from quarreling over which foods to eat. Instruct us when to preserve the past and when to institute change, when to maintain our own preferences and when to yield to others. O oh, reconciling God, we pray, hear us and help us. Gracious God, we give you praise for your continuous untold blessings and we offer you now the petitions of our own hearts. O oh, gracious God, we pray, hear us and help us. Eternal God, we praise you for your servants of time past, whose words and actions have inspired our lives. We mourn those who have died of COVID-19. Unite us with all our beloved dead, now through our memories and at the end of time in your presence. O oh, eternal God, we pray, hear us and help us. Into your hands, merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your loving care for the sake of the one who dwells among us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Let us lift up our hearts as well as our hands to God in heaven. We must always give thanks to God for you, brothers and sisters, as is right, because your faith is growing abundantly. The seraphs called to one another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The crowds went ahead of him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you that the Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup. Also, after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the remembrance of me. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink from this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Pray then in this way. 
Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Beloved, here is the bread. Here is the wine. Here is Jesus. And be fed. All are welcome here. You will be invited to commune at this time uh, by using the words, the body and the blood of Christ, given and shed for you. Amen. The body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his healing grace. Amen. Receive the blessing. God, the creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. Amen.
Go in peace. Be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God. The peace of Christ be with you always. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Thank you.